see the values of being disciplined, committed to the task, and at all material times to be where the people are. Today in Gauteng, we are confronted with a challenge of electricity shortages across all our townships in particular. ESCOM has continued to apply some measures on credit control with no concern on the weather conditions confronting our people now, but generally fighting with municipalities on interest and the debt. We think if we want to celebrate Guala, our leaders and the ANC in particular and the alliance in the province should be amongst the people and ensure that a solution is found in dealing with the issue of electricity. Umdom Dala represented a generation of revolutionaries who were not obsessed with political positions, but was obsessed by working with the people, with the youth, with the members of community. And we want to celebrate Comrade Guala by building amongst ourselves a cadreship of people who are in love in working and serving with our people. It is a known fact today that most organs of people's power are weak, that our relationship with the organs of people's power is on the basis of them and us. And we think if we want to celebrate Herigwala properly, we've got to rework, reorganize ourselves in ensuring that we are forming part of the organs of people's power. We don't see them as them and they don't see us as us, but we become one, which would be the best way to honor and celebrate Comrade Herigwala. Comrades in Bipatong in particular, when the family of Sotsu and Tate Sotsu was murdered, the leadership of the ANC had to pause in the national conference and a delegation would have been sent in Bipatong. The known statement by our leadership was calling for peace and warning us about the role of the third force. But in the engagement with Comrade Guala and many other leaders who were in charge and running the self-defense units, we got to know that the establishment or the achieving of peace can only through the same energy and zeal the apartheid government is using against our people. In Bipadong, in 1992, when our people were slaughtered, and a rally was organized in the East Rand addressed by Comrade Guala. Significantly, Comrade Guala interpreted the noble cause of the noble statement of the ANC that the people are their own liberators by asking for the people to be self-armed and to respond to the enemy. We are bringing this because it is necessary for the ruling party to reaffirm that commitment that the people are their own liberators, that whatever we do, we shouldn't do for our people, but we should do together with our people. In doing so, we will be celebrating Herigwala properly. Comrade, we want to conclude by making just one point, the point about in the collective of leadership, how we miss the qualities of Comrade Harry Guala. Because if you have a leadership collective of everybody who agrees, or people who disagree, or people who disagree generally on a factional basis, and not become irritation to the party on the basis of the interest of the people, you're making the organization a bit weaker. We wish as a province that we could sponsor 
properly the production of a leadership in the O.R. Tambo School, in the Walter Sisulu School in the province, produce quality leadership, and that be a focus of the organization, and that this quality leadership should amongst produce those who are not afraid to talk truth to power. It shouldn't be a function of the opposition parties or a function of the alliance structures, but it should be a collective function. And that can only happen if we are conscious in building quality leadership. We join the nation, we will be part when, to be addressed by the president today as we celebrate the centenary Yom Tom Dala, and we thank the opportunity given to us to connect with comrades in KZN and everywhere else and celebrate the life of Comrade Terry Guala. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, uh, uh, Comrade Kawe, um, for that uh, brief reflection on the role of Ndom Dala during the times that he spent out there as part of the, the work of our movement. Comrade Nomvula, I'm reliably informed that uh, there, was, uh, there is a technical glitch with regard to the, the veto that was supposed to be shown here. And therefore, I would like to request that uh, I hand over the program to you uh, to proceed. And that in, in an event where the video becomes available, we will then indicate later on. Thank you very much, Comrade Mdu. Um, can Comrade uh, Shanaz and the DIP comrades please then assist us in sorting out the challenge with uh, the video footage? Um, and uh, thanks uh, once more, Provincial Secretary of the NC in Gauteng province. And we have heard also about the meaningful contributions and how you as a province also uh, would sponsor how the NC and its entire membership should celebrate and, and emulate uh, uh, the, the, the spirit of Comrade Heri Kuala, both in the NC, in the Alliance, and uh, in, the, in, the, in, the, in the mass democratic movement in its entirety. Comrades, I'm going to try and uh, move on then and request the speaker from COSATU. Um, we were told that uh, Comrade uh, Peggy had uh, worked on a clip, uh, unless if there is somebody who's going to help us to connect on that clip by Comrade Peggy Jali Jali, as it was uh, reported by Comrade uh, Theo. Comrade Tubakeng. Comrade uh, DIP. I'm not I'm not getting feedback from comrades who I'm hosting, no from comrades from DIP, comrade Amos. If that is the case, then I would request that we move on. And if the team that is prepared, that has been organizing, can make a follow up on the 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 the, the video clip that uh, uh, Comrade uh, Theo spoke about uh, on behalf of Kosatu, will gladly appreciate that. Um, Comrade Blade was getting ready, and. Um, I'm sure he might actually have connected if I may be assisted in that regard. Comrade uh, Soli, is Comrade Blade connected already? We seem to, we, we have moved faster than what he had anticipated because he had another commitment earlier. Comrade Mapaila? I think he's connecting uh, Comrade Chair. Maybe just a brief minute. 
I see some other people are going to, if the team can uh, look into those who are on the waiting room. Okay, I would. Um, yeah. Comrade Shanaz so, and Comrade Ubergang. So let's can pray for Kosadu, man. Who? <laughs> yeah, 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 you can see I've got the badge of uh, Sapau, my industrial <laughs> union. <laughs> Don't <move on. laughs> Yeah, they promised us the video clip by Comrade Peggy. And uh, so, yeah, let's. Comrade Shanaz, are we getting Comrade played through? He's not in the waiting room, Comrade Ovula. He's not in the waiting room. Nope. Can I play the video, Shalok? Yes, please pay, play the video Olé. if you can now. Speak for Kosato. Hello, Jess. <laughs> When I saw those men from the hostel, when I saw those men marching with their arms, I said, dear freedom, because without a powerful army of the people, people's army, a democratic army, there can be no peace. This card is open to Ramakuba. That's a very good philosophy. I like the church. Yaltana is so to go as to do sa. The good Moso says in what it told and over. Who should put the Pumogo go good hunger? We all wish to eat in Gaza. But what do we care? We want to eat here and now, not tomorrow. Since the 
compel the inalienable power which turns South Africa into a country of servitude. Yeah, Lele is Khalid and Ami Ami and the sun never set in the British Empire because they then had the strongest army in the world supported by a very strong economy. Without the people's army, we can't talk of peace. Amana Zagayas, the peace, we are going to impose peace on them. Peace is going to be fought for a change. Gia, La Pana Bull, Deputy President, no Tisha, Amana Manoazi, Abafundis, Amana Matuazi, Utida, Makuru Malana, and Fundo must not be partisan. What kind of food is it? Once they call a food and a partisan, we'll throw that education away because there's been no education. Education must be partisan. But it couldn't was the good in oppression, was the good in the democracy, was the good in the fascism, was the good in the Badaman Basalim Kukweni, or Badaman Basalim Maman. A teacher went to teach in Moscow in 1935. Figure corner of Fudisa is Bado. Says, if I have 12, I buy 12 oranges for two shillings and sell them for two shillings and sixpence. What do All children shut up their common <laughs> because education is partisan. <laughs> Once in a panagoba, you get a profit of so many percent of so many percentages. What when we have come to pay our tribute? <laughs> <laughs> One of the conditions they done by Encarta is that MK must be dismantled. Goba, MK, you are like the money does Encarta. That is an insult to MK. You in Encarta, MK, let's go to the Tetagona. We as the African National Congress produced one of the best amis in the world. Oh my God, what's this? Jay Comrade Blade has joined. Um, we, we seem to, to be facing challenges with the video. What we will do, we'll use the Alliance platforms also to distribute this video so that comrades can share. We unfortunately apologize. It's an old uh, clip that we're trying to use and to share. And um, thanks also to comrades in, in, in Gauteng who have been helpful to to actually get us this particular footage. We'll plead with members of the media, those who have it also, and any other form of documentary on Comrade Rikwala, to share it with us. Um, on that note, comrades, I'm going to invite the, the, the General Secretary of uh, the South African Communist Party, Comrade Blade Zimande, who has just joined us and um, 
as we have said, we've acknowledged other leaders of uh, the tripartite alliance, and we have Comrade Blades, who is the leader of the South African Communist Party, who will also make a, a, a statement on behalf of the South African Communist Party as we celebrate. In this program, comrades, we also are live streaming in the SABC, and uh, there is also some connection that is going on with some of the other media platforms. We appreciate that. And my ANC is also active on Facebook. Comrades are linking and are watching on, on, on Facebook. I'm still going to appeal, comrades, please mute yourselves. And those who are coming in, comrade uh, uh, Shanaz, make sure that they are muted. We've also just been joined by comrades from the Northern Cape. We understand the Northern Cape is from far coming to KwaZulu Natal. Welcome comrade Deshi, uh, the provincial secretary and your team from, uh, from, the, from the Northern Cape. We have the Western Cape also here amongst us. Comrade played the Thanks, floor is yours. Comrade played. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. But let me take this opportunity. Let me greet, excuse me, all the comrades. I'm not even aware who is here or not here. I'm sorry about that, Chair. Uh, but uh, I heard there is the DSG. Uh, Comrade Jesse, who is with us, and all other leaders the, uh, in the ANC, uh, the SACP, and COSAT, <clears throat> as well as other formations of our broad democratic movement, uh, who possibly have joined us uh, this afternoon. Allow me, Chair, first, perhaps, to, to start by paying tribute <clears throat> to the late comrade Sheikh Stel, who were laying to rest in Peter Maritzburg this morning. It is a rather unfortunate coincidence that we are laying comrade Sheikhs to rest on the day of the centenary of Ubabukwal. And the two, when they were working together, they were inseparable. Comrade Sheikhs was the first regional secretary of the ANC in the Midlands in 1991, under the leadership and the chairpersonship of Comrade Herikwal. We said goodbye to Comrade Sheikhs today for his enormous contribution to our struggle and to the movement, and highlighted one very prominent thing about Comrade Sheikhs. Sheikhs love the ANC. You couldn't do anything, but loving the ANC also meant he cared about the African National Congress. So I thought, Chair, it's appropriate that I start by saying so, because these two comrades, at some stage, they were inseparable. Indeed, the, the president is still going to make what will, will be the official tribute or lecture on this <clears throat> centenary. So for that reason, then I'm not going to be long at all, but we're just going to say that as the South African Communist Party, we are indeed very honored that we are celebrating the centenary of Ubabkwal as the SACP itself is celebrating its 99th anniversary this year and its own centenary next year. We want to say that maybe my focus will really be on understanding and knowing Comrade Ukwala a bit more closely after he was released from jail in 1998. But I must just say that <clears throat> Comrade Kuala staying in Dambuza Road in Peter Maritzburg, where I also grew up which is the mistake that the Boers used to make, is to think that if you have locked somebody behind bars, everybody else will forget about that person. In fact, the mere fact that many of us, the youngsters in Dambuza, 
in the late 60s into the 70s, early 70s, knew that there was someone in our own street who was serving a prison sentence in Robben Island in the struggle for freedom. That in itself acted as a source of conscientization. Let alone that when Ubakwala was released, I think it was 1972, from his first stint of a sentence in Robben Island, he was actually delivering laundry using the old Toyota High Ace, which was known, uh, Chair, I'm sure you remember it as Upotsot. It was a blue Toyota High Ace, and he was delivering laundry to different houses and so on, and people dropping in their dirty clothes and so on. Little did we know, until Ubakwala gets rearrested, I think around 1976, that in fact, in between those uh, <clears throat> clothes, Ubakwala was also busy recruiting for Mkonto Wesizu. So he never gave up, which is one very important lesson that we need to learn from someone like him. So by the time Ubab Kuala gets released in 1988, he was already, like many of our leaders who were imprisoned, long-term imprisonment, a hero. And as I say, on my side, growing up as a young boy in the same street as where Bab Kuala came from, acted as a huge motivation for actually becoming part of the struggle for liberation. When Babkwala came out of prison, he came out at a, just on the eve of what perhaps may go down in our history as one of the most difficult periods, especially in KZN, but also to a certain extent in Gauteng, particularly in the then Israel and a few other places. Because when Babkwala came out in 1988, Violence was picking up, the violence of the apartheid regime against the people. And with the apartheid regime using its surrogates, like the IFP at the time in Qatar, as it was known, as its stormtroopers. And when Bab Kuala was released, he didn't hesitate. He just do did a few things that were very crucial. He quickly was working with the comrades to establish self-defense units and also quickly established political classes, some of which used to, 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 hold, to hold them at home, not just be good in defending the area and defending communities only by force of arms, but they must also be politically mature and politically conscious. Now, one of the big battles then that were ever waged in this part of the, of the world, in Peter Maritzburg in particular at that time, though Bakwala was a national hero, but it's important to talk about this because it, it was a measure of his stature that managed to actually help us to negotiate very complicated period. On the 25th of March, 1990, Inkata, assisted by the South African Defense Force and the South African police at that time, descended upon Edendale, wanting to overrun Edendale because Edendale at that time was a UDF stronghold and consequently also was becoming an ANC stronghold. This was now hardly two months after the unburning of the ANC. Ubabu Kuala used to then sit us down and say, why don't we analyze as we, two conclusions we came to. We, we said, firstly now, the, the, the Seven Day War was actually the launch of one of the most violent periods in the history of our revolution. And secondly, the aim of the launching of that war primarily was to prevent the African National Congress from re-emerging from underground and be able to establish 
its own structures on the ground. That was the, the twin objectives. But one of the things, as the apartheid regime launched this war, at the same time it advanced the idea that what was the problem in KZN in the main? They would argue that also in Gauteng, when vigilantes were actually attacking people in trains, what, what subsequently happened in Boipatong, and the battles, running battles between hostile dwellers and, and comrades in the East Rand, Katlehong and all those places, the apartheid regime was saying, this is black on black violence. I won't forget about Kuala because he was at peace best with this. That this notion of black on black violence was being deliberately propagated by the apartheid regime to give a sense that the regime's hands were clean. So the blood that is being spilled is just black people fighting amongst themselves and reinforcing this notion of black people being violent. But Ubabu Kuala was insistent, insistent that everything must be correctly characterized. This is not, this was not black on black violence, but this was violence of the apartheid regime against the people with a particular focus at that time to dislodge the liberation movement by preventing it from being able to establish its own base in, inside the country. And in a way also what the apartheid regime was doing at that time was also to try and determine the outcomes of the negotiations process that had actually started. It was because of that, that also the argument grew strong that what you cannot be able to win on the ground, you won't be able uh, to win on the table because the, the apartheid regime was waging war to destabilize the movement uh, on the ground. Bab Kuala was therefore a very important theoretician of the movement, a very important a source of political education. That was one of his strongest strengths. I remember that I was amongst those who served in his first REC that he led in 1991. Every week, once a week without fail, we would go to the boardroom in the office as REC members and invite a few other comrades who were working in the office and we will be doing political discussions. One of his favorite texts I remember now is the text by Engels, Private Property and the Family and the Origins of the Family. And we would sit and discuss every week. You go and read 10 pages, we come back the following week, we discuss those 10 pages. Something that really brought strength into building a very strong organization because his own belief was that you don't only fight by a gun, but also you must have leaders who are politically clear. And that's a challenge that we face today. That as we are facing over the last couple of years, if not more, a decline in the level of political education and political consciousness, we run the danger actually of slowly allowing our movement to be weakened. We are very pleased of that the ANC has established the OR Tambo School, which is something that will hopefully be very helpful. And the SACP itself, we have now established our own Jack Simon National Party School. And those will need to be able to work together in order to ensure that we have got a, a politically conscious cadership. The other thing is that Uba Gwala used to command from the front, not from the back. As comrades can see and remember from the video, Uba Gwala's hands had become motionless. He couldn't use them. And we strongly suspected that he was poisoned actually in Rubin Island. We were very convinced because he was one of the most prolific writers and also was a political educator in Rubin Island. But he commanded, during the Seven Day War, he was in the front line and security had to try and whisk him away. And he said, I can't be telling comrades to go and defend the area and I'm sitting at home being nicely protected by bodyguards and so on. And I won't forget this because at the height of the violence at some stage, 
Comrade Madiba, as president of the ANC, decided to send a delegation to the Midlands to come and, and, and find out about violence. So they sent a person, by the way, Ubakwala used to be a very tough person sometimes, very difficult to handle. We must say that, you know, and sometimes could be very stubborn, but very principled at the same time. So Umatima, knowing him, decided to send his closest friend, the one person that Ubakwala respected at all times. Many people may not know this, was Comrade Walter Sisul. Ubakwala would be like a little puppy when Comrade Walter was around. He used to call him Wali. Oh, Wali. We have arrived here. Matiba has sent you. Oh, it's so nice. And you were smiling from ear to ear. Then we go into the boardroom. He then says, well, Wali, if Matiba has sent you to come and understand what is going on with the violence, can we please go and get into our cars so that we go and experience violence firsthand? And Ubakwala said the cars must actually drive <laughs> to a border area, as it were, between ANC territory which was very common those days, and IFP territories, which were respective no-go areas for the two organizations. Security had to fight a big battle to say, but Baba, how can you do this? He said, you don't just study the war in the boardrooms and understand it. You must understand it on the ground. That was Comrade Harry Gwad. Of course, Ubaba, this is one thing also that maybe I can't end without saying. I must congratulate the comrades who have managed to set up the Harry Gwala Foundation. I think that is very important that we set up institutions that will serve as memory to our leaders, especially those who have departed. But as the SACP would like to really caution though, that in establishing such foundations, we must be very, very careful that we don't allow these foundations to be used to attack in an unprincipled fashion organizations that those leaders belong to. We don't expect the Harry Gwala Foundation to be used to attack the SACP. It will no longer be a Harry Gwala Foundation. It will be an opportunistic foundation opportunistically using the name of Ubabu Gwala. We are not saying the foundation can't engage with the party critically, but it can't be used opportunistically to actually attack the SACP. So we must not allow the Nelson Mandela Foundation or the Ahmed Katrada Foundation to be used as a platform to attack the African National Congress. We need to be absolutely clear about this. I think that is very important. I'm saying this because unfortunately, one of these platforms on Ubabu Gwala was used actually to distort something that I think I'm duty bound to, to clarify. Ubabu Gwala was suspended from the SACP at some stage in the 90s, early 90s, because he did not cooperate with an investigation that was being done by the SACP about the threats that were facing some SACP leaders in KZN. He refused to cooperate with that and the SACP decided to suspend him. But interestingly enough, by the time Bob Gwala died, he had been readmitted into the SACP because after a while, Bob Gwala realized that indeed, and actually did say to the SACP, I was misled because one of the people who was behind all this who have proven now that he was working for the apartheid regime and apologize to those comrades who were nearly killed for having been wrongly accused, which was a very normal thing in those times. So that, on that basis, Ubabwala was then readmitted back onto the South African Communist Party. So we must lay that to rest. So it's very important that we use such platforms to tell and correct uh, our own history. Maybe the last thing, Chair, that I need to say is that the challenge that really is facing us, we dare not allow our alliance, our movement, to be driven to the brink through factionalism. One gets a sense that 
the depth of factionalism across our movement has is reached a very dangerous stage where there seems to be a belief by any one faction that in order for it to consolidate its power or hold over the movement, it must destroy the other faction completely. In other words, its own condition of existence must be the destruction of the other faction. We have seen how these things have gone to such an extent that hatred in some instances amongst comrades is worse than hatred between comrades and our enemies. Now, at this rate, and if we are not able to arrest this, we may actually be taking our movement, just throwing it over the cliff. You know, working with Ubab Gwala, hard as he was, but he used to make sure that when we're going to conference as much as you are going to contest, you are not enemies. And always preach this, but increasingly it's not happening in practice. So it's very important that we remember Obabwala, we also face the reality that we are facing now. The SACP is very concerned about this, that factionalism connected with corruption and money politics is likely to drive our organization to the cliff. At some stage, we need to say, hold it. Let's just hold back for a while. Why don't we just sit down and say, we can't be going this way because we'll all be losers at the end of each day. There is no faction that will survive, no matter how strong it thinks, if the ANC or our movement as a whole is dead. So that faction will also die a natural death. So it's very important as we remember that we keep that. And also the issue of the alliance, comrades. With the kind of challenges that we are facing now, like COVID-19, it's actually very clear that alliance unity is not a luxury, but it's an absolute necessity. There is no way any component of our movement on its own can actually be able to defeat this pandemic. And also we need to unite the movement to support the effort of government to be able to defeat this. So it's very, very important that the alliance is nurtured and we value it. In fact, it's very strange in some respects that much as sometimes we do not pay adequate attention to building the alliance, many progressive forces throughout the world, they envy our alliance because they themselves in many of their countries are trying to build alliances and they are very difficult. They fractionate all the time. And they say to us, how did you build your own alliance? It seems to have to be very resilient and so on. It is very important, therefore, that we seek in the name of Ubabu Kuala and other heroes of ours to actually build the tripartite alliance so that this alliance also is able to deal with what the SACP refers to as the immediate triple challenges. We have the structural the triple structural challenges of poverty, inequality, and unemployment. But at the moment, we are faced with immediate triple challenges of COVID-19, the economic deepening economic crisis, and the crisis of social reproduction. Our people increasingly, households and families, unable to make ends meet. And we have to fight these things together and in their interrelationship, because we cannot fight one without the other. But nevertheless, the SACP is also of the view that COVID-19 presents a new opportunity, bad as it is, for us to actually radically restructure our economy, such that it is an economy that is inclusive and that is able to serve everybody. With those words, we say long live the memory of Comrade Harry Kuala, long live. Thank you very much, Comrade. Long live, long live Comrade Blake. Uh, long live. Thank you very much, Comrade Blake. Um, thank you. That was indeed uh, uh, very inspiring, uh, reflecting on the past, looking at where we are, but of importance, also contributing on how we must proceed, celebrating the life of Comrade Harry Kuala, as well as uh, reliving his uh, organizational commitment his uh, activism as a communist, a trade unionist, 
a leader of the African National Congress, but also a person who loved the people of South Africa. Thank you very much. Um, yes, Comrade Deshi, Provincial Secretary of uh, the Northern Cape, uh, says uh, socialism is the future, build it now. The unity of the alliance is paramount. Let's build it now and work strongly on it. On that note, we really want to thank you, Comrade Blade. The issues you have raised about uh, the era of uh, the, the violence uh, of the apartheid uh, regime against the people of South Africa, that the regime itself wanted to put as a, a black on black violence, quite a very scientific and correct definition of what we went through as a nation. The, the determination by Comrade Kuala, even though he was uh, incarcerated and when he was also disabled, he refused to be silenced and to be made to be absent from the people of Tambuza, the people of uh, KwaZulu-Natal, the people of South Africa. And uh, that is part of what we definitely have to, to also redo in this uh, period where we're fighting the invisible enemy. One of our mammoth tasks as activists is to reactivate our structures and ensure that albeit the challenges of COVID-19 will remain grounded and closer to the communities. And, I must say here, through you, Comrade Blade, Comrade Jesse, Comrade uh, Mantage, uh, our national chair and the leadership in its entirety, the Alliance has also found it, even under these difficult conditions, to influence what needs to be done, the interventions, the, 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 the programs, uh, the, the, the resetting of the pattern uh, in looking at economic transformation. Our alliance through the Alliance Council, the Secretariat has reflected on issues around education, around the economy, on gender-based violence, on the issues of international solidarity with the people of Palestine. And continuously, we all, I think we need to then take advantage of how we have already started to work post Nazarek, trying to rebuild and renew the NC and the Alliance in its entirety, but appreciate the leadership that has been provided by the Alliance leaders. And in this instance, I really want to say on behalf of um, myself and Comrade Mdu, the program directors, we really appreciate your input and hope it will be also shared in all our other platforms, both print and electronic of the, of the, of the Alliance. Comrades, without uh, any further waste of time, allow me to invite a, a, a leader of the African National Congress, an activist in his own right, a, a, a leader of government in KwaZulu-Natal, a, a child of the African National Congress, the provincial chairperson of the NC in, Kwaz in KwaZulu-Natal, Comrade uh, Sihle. Zigalala. I've also noticed that we have just been joined by the provincial chairperson of the NC in, in Houghton, Comrade David Makura. Um, let me then welcome Comrade Sisle uh, to, to then make his remarks on behalf of uh, the province of KwaZulu Natal. Comrade Kuzen. Thanks, uh, Comrade uh, Program Directors, Comrade Nomvula Mokonyane, and EC member and Comrade Ntumsentuli, uh, the ANC Provincial Secretary in Guazulu Natal. I wish to extend my greetings to the National Chairperson, Comrade Gwede Mantashe, the Deputy Secretary of the ANC, Comrade JC Duarte, the South African Communist Party, Comrade Blade Nzimande, and the entire leadership, Comrades from COSATU, the ANC Youth League and the ANC Women's League, the veterans and comrades of the MK, the family of Comrade Kiri Kuala, Umtom Dala, and the foundation of Comrade Kiri Kuala that has done a sterling work in ensuring that they uphold the profile and the legacy of Comrade Kiri Kuala. Comrades, Exactly 100 years ago, in the aftermath of the World War, our country was blessed with the birth 
of the Lion of Midland, is Twalandwe Comrade Hirikwala. From an early age, he had to defy the odds and overcome the limitation that his native land imposed on him. In his backbreaking journey, he was transformed into a symbol of defiance against the dark forces hell-bent to destroy him, his movement, and his people. It was the trials and tribulations of the day which, faced, which he faced that made him a champion of truth, an embodiment of honesty, and a disciplined revolutionary to the bitter end. Ndom Dala, we're celebrating him as a resilient and a stoic child of a disabled father and the South African peasantry. We must understand that in celebrating Comrade Herikwala, was celebrating one of the leaders who was grounded amongst the people. When his umbilical cord was cut on the 30th of July, 1920, Little did his family know that their son was going to grow to become an outstanding liberation hero. From the movement, he became conscious from his first movement. He became conscious of his surrounding and started to interpret the conditions around him growing up from Kwaswaiman. And he attested in one of the interviews he held in 1989 where he said, and I quote, my grandmother and other women used to go around and do casual labor for the farmers, stripping vacuum bags, and they used to wrap their feet because of the cold weather they were suffering from. And Comrade Rikwala attested and put this clearly because his conditions were clear, the conditions, the background of hardship. And they will say, when others call him a, a hardliner, he will say, we are hardliners because we come from the background of hard conditions. One thing we must appreciate and learn from Comrade Rikwala is that he understood the essence of the revolution. He understood both the essence of the national democratic revolution, but also socialism and communism. And he knew where was the position of the masses in the struggle. But he also understood that there was an opposition, the enemy of the revolution. And he will interpret why those who are the enemy of the revolution are the enemy. He will say they are enemy because they have out of explosion, explo out of exploitation of the black majority have maximize economic benefit. And for them, apartheid has been a tool to ensure that maximization. And therefore, the relationship between the class and the national strategy was of paramount importance for Comrade Herikwala. But also Comrade Herikwala knew that while he talk of the enemy, he will also talk of the enemy from within the Congress movement. In the book, The Road to Democracy, the ANC veteran Wilton Mkwai recalls that at some point, he Rikwala in Ropen Island, when he arrived for the second time, he said, Lai Ropen Island, we had to pay Lumunto Matengis, Wonka Banyabant by Atengisa, and that for him was Comrade Omkov. He believed Uguti. Dazo Zonki Kati must analyze Ukutumuntu no Muntu Wenzani and what is his contribution in the struggle. From 1990, from 1942, when he joined the Communist Party, he was informed by the understanding of the exploitative capitalist system. He dedicated his life to the struggle of the working class and the struggle for socialism. He worked tirelessly to organize for the ANC his own party. In his view, the party, he organized for it because he knew that organizing people 
for the ANC was the basis for the fight for socialism. Comrade Herikwala, amongst other things, he hated tribalism and despised racism. He would always be clear that our revolution is against any tribal promotion or any definition of comrades according to their tribe. He was equally emphatic when it comes to the national character of the revolution. Drawing an example of this, when he was released from the prison from Robben Island, after his first arrest, the leadership among others instructed him to go and join the IFP. And Comrade Eric Wallace said, no, but that is a Bantustan organization. I'm not going to do that. I'm going to organize underground for comrades to join the MK and I will continue to mobilize for the national liberation movement and not for an organization that is there and working for the regime. He was quite clear in his tactic and strategies. Part of his understanding about the national character of the revolution was non-racialism of the ANC that were fighting for a truly non-racial society. Conrad Eric Walla spoke openly that he found the politics of the black consciousness very correct, but insufficient to deliver a truly non-racial society that the African National Congress was striving for. So today, when we celebrate Comrade Eric Walla, we must again commit ourselves to the struggle against all institutions, systems, and anything that continues to define the people of South Africa in terms of their race. And I'm sure from where he is sleeping in Kwaswaiman, Comrade Eric Wala would say, Ulkuni Ulkun Lom Sebenz, Um Sebenz Womachuni, Namusha Ushukuti Maskaete. Preach the unity of the oppressed, but more so the unity of the poor in South Africa. Apart from his character of being a defiant and of telling the truth to the power, but Comrade Eric Wala appreciated the role of the alliance, the unity of the ANC with the SACP and COSATU. He himself had been a trade uh, unionist. He had been a member and he died being the member of the Communist Party. But he also understood that that particular phase of the revolution needed a national liberation movement to lead the struggle for national liberation. He participated in a number of efforts to build peace in KwaZulu-Natal. But his understanding of building peace was that you are not going to confront and build peace through surrendering to the enemy. He worked together with a number of leaders <laughs> of the ANC, including former President Zuma and Comrade uh, Jeff Hatebe, as they were both working, Kuala being the chair of Midland and Zuma in uh, Southern Natal. We will want to take this opportunity to thank the ANC for dedicating this year in commemoration of the life of Henry Kuala. And that's why in Guazulu Natal last week, we had a commemoration session dedicated in his honor in the legislature. And that's why as the government of KwaZulu-Natal, especially the Department of Health, we have named the Itindale Hospital after Comrade Herikwala. We owe Comrade Herikwala unity of the alliance and of the movement. But Comrade Herikwala would not want us to cherish his memory through only lectures and renaming of institutions after him. He would want to see us working together to outroot racism, to uproot and eradicate 
women abuse and build a society where gender inequality is not in existence at all. We must not only transform the economy, but for Herikwala, we must eradicate poverty and inequality and move to socialism, as he will always emphasize. Thank you, Comrade Mdu uh, uh, and Comrade uh, uh, Nomvula for the opportunity. Thank you. Mike Shingange, mute yourself. Thank you very much, Comrade Sitle, Provincial Chair of the NC in KwaZulu Natal. Indeed, uh, very, very important reflections that also fit into what all other previous speakers have said, that it is only through a united alliance with a program that changes the lives of our people and challenge and makes a commitment to eradicate all forms of discrimination in the form of race, gender, or even class, most importantly. And that his, uh, his memory must not just be celebrated through the renaming of uh, institutions and memorial lectures, but it must also be through the work that even the Herikwala Foundation has been doing, even during this uh, uh, challenging period of, uh, of COVID, where we have seen them crisscrossing KZN and Gauteng, intervening and reaching out to those who are exposed to the non-availability of uh, food, the people that have been exposed also to elements because of their quality of life. We really appreciate that, Comrade uh, Sisle. And as you've said, together with Comrade Blade also, about his, uh, his, his, his understanding of, uh, of um, the violence that was uh, meted against the people of South Africa. We must thank the legislature of KwaZulu-Natal once more also that uh, dedicated a, a session in honor and in memory of Comrade Herikwala. Siabonga Kulu Kuzeni. Comrades, we are now going to invite our national chairperson of the African National Congress, who is also a leader and a, a, a member of the South African Communist Party, a former trade unionist, but also somebody who has crossed paths with uh, Comrade Herikwala in, uh, in the East Rand then. Um, now Epuruleni during those demanding times, uh, who has also been an activist in the Emalasheni Civic uh, Association. Um, his name is Comrade uh, Samson Goethe Mantashe. I'm going to invite him to, to then uh, share and do the lecture. Thereafter, we'll come back with Comrade Mdu and share with you on uh, the way forward that would also afford a few of our comrades coming from different provinces and participants to raise issues to the to the four speakers that have spoken here today. Comrade National Chair. Sorry, Comrade Chair, I okay. think you muted. Before you come uh, in, there, let me just quickly for the record indicate the president was joining us and due to unplanned and unforeseen circumstances has uh, actually had to pull out and assign the national chairperson to on his behalf make the presentation here tonight comrade national chairperson uh, program directors comrade nomvula mkonyane and comrade mtumiseni ntuli uh, <clears throat> leadership of the NC, here, Comrade DSG, I saw you. Leadership of the Communist Party, uh, Comrade Blade and members of the Central Committee. Uh, leadership of COSATU, led by Solima Paila today. Uh, what else do we say when there is a vacuum? Uh, comrades from the various provinces who are present here. You know, the disadvantage of being sent to deliver a lecture on behalf is that it kills your own innovation. One time in the 1993 period, 
I was sent to replace Comrade Slovo in Etimbisa. And as I was taking the platform, people were saying, I will, who Slovo and Jalune Chaiki and a Bob up. But uh, I had to deliver that message. I mean, that situation today. The first thing I want to, to, to mention is that, thank you very much for the support I had when I was fighting some invisible enemy called COVID-19. Uh, it is real, uh, it needs determination and commitment. Thank you very much, comrades. You send all sorts of messages. Uh, and I had to warn Nomvula uh, not to look for the living among the dead. Uh, because I'm not dead, you can't look for me among the dead. Now, <laughs> it was 100 years ago, exactly, when a great son of the soil was born. This son of the soil ended up being a teacher, a communist, an organizer, and a tribute of our people, Stalande, uh, Harry Kuala, was born in a place called Kwasoyman, uh, near Peter Marisbeck. Now, my name is Gavan Bapa. I was telling you about what Tambosa, Gongati, Utambosa is some huge city uh, when it is up to any village. So he's from there. One of the things that we can learn from Harry Kuala is that growing exposed to glaring poverty and emotional trauma. Uh, is not the end of the life. It should actually structure you and fashion you into a gallant fighter. That's why it becomes important uh, to always remind people of one of the rebellions that was written and related verbally to 1906 Bambata Rebellion. If you talk about the Bambata Rebellion today, many people uh, want to attach a tribal complexion to that rebellion. But if you are a Marxist and you are an analyst, you will know that there's nothing uh, tribal about uh, the Bambata rebellion. It's shaped mainly of our comrades by hearing the story. So the challenge facing all of us today is whether when you organize these lectures, we memorialize our leaders or use the lectures like this uh, to actually renew the organization. And somebody asked me, what is this organizational renewal? And I said to, to, to them, a renewal organization means that there is an organization, uh, it exists, it is weakened in a number of aspects. Then to renew it means it must be renewed for a purpose. And we must be able to identify the purpose we are renewing the organization for. If we don't have the purpose of renewing the organization, then we'll memorialize these leaders when actually they should be an anchor point for us to renew the organization. Uh, you know, when you are a teacher like Eric Wala, one of the things that you pointed are your students. One of his students was Moses Mabida. Uh, and many of these great leaders of the movement went through classes at night and became great leaders, whether it is Moses Mabida or Moses Gordon. Uh, and when he joined the Commonwealth in 1942, and then the ANC in 1944, he became a founding member of the Congress Youth League. Now, a debate that we always had uh, with Comrade um, do that this thing of debating the revolution on the basis of age uh, instead of on the basis of a contribution of ideas is actually flawed. There's nothing revolutionary about being young or old. And there's nothing making you useless by being old, old or young. What is important is what ideas do you contribute to the revolution? Now, having said that, Harry Guala belongs to the generation of youth leaders who led the movement for five decades. Count 1944 to 1994, it was led by this great uh, cohort of youth of 1944. 
And I want to appeal to the youth today uh, to appreciate the fact that uh, they must get into the movement, sponsor ideas, stand for their ideas, engage uh, logically and debate politically. For example, if you renew an organization and that renewed organization doesn't have the basis for a political framework for the revolution, to me, it's a waste of time. I have met a number of members of our movement, uh, both in the party and the NC, who actually do not understand the concept of, for example, uh, the basic concept of race, class, and gender, as the contradictions of the colonialism of a special type, and refuse to appreciate that this colonial realization that what makes South Africa different is the fact that the colonizer want to put a claim on the same piece of land as the colonized. And that challenge remains at hand when uh, comrades say talk of uh, uh, economy in the hands of few and white male in the main. He is talking about colonialism of a special time. And our, our resolution and our revolution should be to resolve that colonialism of a special time and actually resolve the three that related contradictions of race, class, and gender. Now, a very important uh, lesson raised there was that political material, political material, uh, and, uh, and conscientization and teaching one another is necessity for approaching a revolution. For example, you see, if you listen today, what it each other's truth about the quality and quantity of the membership agency. Now, uh, when we say that we tend to create self righteousness and inferiority, instead of appreciating that quantity can only be transferred to quality by the frequency of blows we throw at it and transform it into quality. But if we look at, qual at quantity and resent it, Uguti, la quantity riffraff, everybody started at that level, but somebody took a, a resolution to throw uh, the punches on that quantity to convert it into quality. Something we're very lazy to do. So instead of wanting to transform quantity into quality, we tend to want to disown it. Now, let's use this lecture I require to recommit ourselves to make our smallest contribution in transforming the quantity into quality. The NC is working and operating under control of legality. It allows everybody to come in. Others come there with the intention of, of, the, of, hurt, of hurting it. What do we do? Do we run away from that? Or do we allow a debate to be a debate? You know, yesterday somebody asked me about the consultative conferences. And I reminded that individual, Oguti, there were three consultative conferences. The first one was in Lubatsi, the second one was in Mrogoro, the third one was in Kawe. Uh, All of them were defined consultative conferences because of the nature of the gathering. In the main, because the ANC at the time had no access to its membership base. Now, we're, we're having this debate now, and we must entertain it and listen to those who propose it. What do you want? Why do you want a consultative conference? And I ask two questions. Who should be consulted? Consulted by who? Because if we don't answer those basic questions, we can convene a meeting and further divide and weaken the ANC. And that's where we are. And, uh, you know, uh, Guala, through football, uh, an opponent was created to sustain political consciousness. And among prisoners, some of whom were not political prisoners, during the second term, due to the increasing population of the post-1976 uh, generation of youth prisoners, 
while I dedicated the prison uh, term to develop a robot political imagination through a series of lectures entitled Man and His Country. You see, now we've got the Ogatambo School, we've got Walter uh, Sisulu uh, Political School, we've all these many schools. These schools must focus on transforming the big number of activists into real serious quality activists. Uh, the lecture series conceptualized the South African struggle within the doctrine of Marxism Leninism. Through these lectures, Guala transformed the island into being a site, uh, from being a site of repression to a university of the liberation struggle. I'm raising this issue because uh, Comrade Blade. We have a duty to ensure that we sustain the theory that the National Democratic Revolution is the shortest route to socialism. But we must also, in reviving, in reviving that, not assume that it is going to fall from heaven. It is going to happen if we do certain things to ensure that the National Democratic Revolution is the shortest route to socialism. And socialism is not mana. Socialism is transformation of society. You see, remember what Matiba said in paying tribute to Erigual in his funeral. He said, many of today's leaders drank from the deep well of perpetual political wisdom. But such was the nature of his teaching that the products of his education with themselves develop into political giants in their own right using the tools he gave them to develop independent uh, thought and uh, into independent thought and analysis. And therefore, comrades, it is important for us that when you interact, the easiest thing that you will have today is to think that if I attack Solima Paina and everybody celebrates, uh, I go around saying Dimkale, Dimkale, and that's it. So Dimkale, so what? What positive contribution have I made in interacting with him? It happens with many of us. And I want to appeal to our comrades to appreciate the fact that APA, we have a responsibility to develop one another, uh, lean on one another, continue struggling for freedom, continue to accept that uh, economic freedom has not yet been achieved. Uh, the, 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 the men who are remembering today and the respect of his peers as well as those older and younger than him, uh, I like, uh, I like because he was forthright and he spoke his mind uh, without any reservation, as long as he was convinced uh, that doing so would advance the revolution. I, I, I thought that the general of the party would have taken all of us on board about a time when there was an ideological battle about the very survival of the Southern Communist Party, including a fight about its name. We were young. Uh, he used to just throw something to make us listen careful at it. So that you must be reliable. You must not be changing your views every moment you hear somebody else. And I think that period saved the Communist Party and we need to continue preserving it because many of the, we lost a number of prominent communists in that period. We don't talk about that period, but it's one of the most important period. And when we complain, uh, uh, Comrade Blade, sometimes uh, we say the party has gone younger and we stop there. What we don't do is an analysis of a party that was under siege at a particular point in time. It has to be protected by very few strong cadres of the movement. Now, and if we don't want to remind ourselves that, then we are not going to find it easy to sustain the party. We'll complain and say, party under siege, I fool. A party 
It's not an assist. The party is, is one day the party has a long history of strengthening a content of the ideology of the revolution. You, you, you know, I criticized the party two years ago. I said to them, you came up with a very good analysis of the development of uh, capital formations post independent, but you killed it by giving it a label. So it's intended, it's entrepreneurs. Bring that analysis back, Ukuti. A capital formation developed beyond independent. When the private sector is reluctant, the state has always taken the responsibility of facilitating the development of capital formation post independent. And we must not label them as greedy and all that. It is the nature of the capital formations post independent, but must be anchored on theory. And that theory uh, is what we need today all the time. So yeah, yeah Alliance uh, is not about liking one another. It's about playing different roles, commit others to appreciate that your role is your role. You will continue playing it whether I want or I don't want. Uh, so Harry Guala was a theoretician. Uh, he wrote, uh, he always disagreed in many, many times with Matewa, but they, they described their disagreement in that uh, neither of them emerged poorer of knowledge every time they disagreed. Let me repeat it. They agree that neither of them appeared neither poorer of knowledge every time they disagreed. I hope we can have that uh, capacity cousin. When uh, we're not uh, on the same WhatsApp group, we must still come out very strong and clear. Uh, Heribuala internal, in, uh, internalized the impatience of the masses regarding promise of total free society, yet he remained ever scientific in his approach to the revolution. That is the aspect that needs to be strengthened. Yoguti, even when there are disagreements, we don't see it the same way. Uh, scientific analysis must guide the disagreement and engagement. Because by the time we find solutions, we will be aware of the fact that those solutions are scientific. And, and therefore, they will stand the test of time. And that's what we need, uh, Harry Guala, uh, to when we, when we think of him, we must actually wish that capacity would uh, rub on us. Uh, let me conclude, uh, uh, Comrade, by saying our forebears built an internationalist movement, built an internationalist movement, a movement that was not narrow, that was not local, a movement that appreciated that it needed solidarity from others, it needed to pledge solidarity to others. When the, 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 the Palestinians are actually being wiped out of existence by Netanyahu trying to annex them, we have a duty to be uh, playing a role in stopping that. When Moroga is an occupying force in Western Sahara, we have a responsibility to talk to that because if we don't, there may be fewer who talk about it. We must appreciate the fact that we are part of that global international movement and take that job and that responsibility seriously. On behalf of the president, President Matomela Cyril Ramaphosa, uh, I must say that we have an obligation to combat, root out, and isolate the collapse elements among us. It is the 2017 National Conference that resolved that will summarily suspend people who fail to give an acceptable explanation or voluntarily step down while they face disciplinary investigation and postural procedures. We will publicly dissociate ourselves from anyone whether business donor, supporter, or member accused of corruption and reported to be involved in corruption, 
All ANC members and structures should cooperate with law enforcement agencies uh, to criminally prosecute anyone guilty of crime. We therefore once more recommit ourselves to the implementation of the conference resolution. Furthermore, as head of government, uh, now you must remember that for the period of this lecture, I'm still on behalf of the president. So, uh, so you must respect me. Uh, I, I want you to listen very carefully to this one. We therefore once more commit ourselves uh, to the implementation of our conference resolution. Furthermore, as head of government, uh, do you hear that, sir? As head of government, I have already signed a proclamation uh, uh, authorizing SIU University to any unknown fully improper conduct in the procurement of any good, works, or services during the late national state of disaster in any state institution will not rest until corrupt elements face full might of the law and account for the action. As ANC members, we must take leave from the from, from his life, try to emulate him by ensuring that the goals of the revolution that he was part of and led are achieved. That the revolution that he was outstanding champion of is sustained and defended all the time. At to fight corruption everywhere. And I have signed proclamation <coughs> that is COVID. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Comrade Chairperson of the African National Congress, Comrade uh, Samson. Thank you. Thank you, Comrade Samson, uh, National Chair. Um, and thanks uh, to you presenting on behalf of uh, the President of the African National Congress, who's also the President of the Republic of South Africa. Comrade Jesse DSG, Comrade uh, Sisle, Provincial Chair, Comrade Blade, Comrade Kawe, can you all just uh, give us an opportunity? I'm going to invite four comrades coming from the provinces that are with us here to raise their hands here on the chat and if they have issues or comments to make but not additional speeches i'm giving each one of them a minute so we will take five minutes just to hear issues that are going to be raised by the participants in in this room and then uh go back to yourselves before Comrade Mtumiseni comes back to wrap uh, this program of today. But thank you very much, National Chair, and uh, convey our greatest appreciation to the President. Any takers? I see Comrade Tsepo. Uh, thanks, thanks uh, Great, very much. Show your face when you speak. Uh, I, I was sitting next to a Mukuku comrade uh, Chaperson, so I did not want to represent um, abject poverty that our masses are continuously faced with on a daily basis. Uh, but nonetheless, thanks a lot, comrade Chaperson. Uh, just to say, uh, coming from the Northwest, which is a province that uh, factions has really been quite endemic. Uh, I'm extremely agitated by the speakers who has made presentation today, starting with the Comrade Chairperson, uh, Comrade uh, General Secretary of the party, and Comrade Sihlezigalala and Comrade Kawe from Houting, that indeed Comrade uh, part of what we must really do today uh, and that I'm agitated to always speak about is the achievement of unity in the organization, understanding that whilst we may be having different uh, political orientations in terms of ideology and 
preferences of leadership, it is also important that we must understand that the ANC has always been a melting pot of all ideas and therefore uh, we appreciate and we are very much inspired by the ability uh, of what seemed to have been something that is quite improbable by the province of KZN to achieve unity and be able to provide an ANC that remains today a quite an exemplary kind of leadership in the country. And we are highly appreciative of the leadership of Comrade Sisla Zigalala and his collective in KZN. You continue to inspire some of us to work towards achieving unity. I thank you. Thank you, Comrade. Um, Comrade Teshi. There is no other. Uh, yes, Comrade Teshi is not there. Um, I've seen Comrade Lindy where? Charlie, Charlie. Lindy? Lindy when Charlie, Charlie, I can't, he's not, she's not picking up. Deshi is also not picking up. Um, There's Comrade Sifiso Gwala, Comrade Che. Yes, Che. Yes, uh, Comrade DSG. Comrade Sifiso Gwala, you may take the floor. Uh, thank you, Comrade uh, uh, Mokonyane. Uh, I think we appreciate uh, this platform and what uh, the Alliance is actually doing uh, in honor of Harry Gwala. And we believe that uh, uh, going forward in the next year, a lot is going to be done to ensure that uh, we remember Comrade Harry Gwala. Uh, for me, I think we must be able uh, as the government to ensure that we use uh, the Department uh, of Arts and Culture to ensure that we uh, honor our heroes uh, through ensuring that books must be commissioned of these heroes because we are at an, a, a stage where a number of the old guard uh, are leaving us and we can only honor them by ensuring that that history is properly uh, recorded. And I think we, we, we want to thank the leadership of Kuzin in Guazulu Natal. It's highly appreciated, uh, appreciated. The gesture to honor Itindale Hospital is really a, a, a way forward and we hope that uh, through engagements going forward in this year a lot will be achieved uh, to ensure that we honor complete Harry Gwala. Thank you. Thank you very much Comrade uh, Sfiso and uh, we appreciate uh, those words coming from the Gwala family um, and, and we really appreciate your identity and continuous support working together with the African National Congress. Comrade National Chair and Comrade uh, Sisle, I'm sure you can comment around issues of heritage and uh, in line with what you have raised, Comrade Sisle, earlier on, on, uh, on the work that uh, the provincial government of KwaZulu Natal has done. Uh, but let me hear from you, Comrade uh, Kuzeni. Thanks, Comrade uh, Program Director. I think Comrade Sfiso uh, is correct, uh, and Comrade uh, from Northwest. I think unity is important. And I think Comrade Blade was emphasizing the point that we may differ uh, on species, but we must know that we must not allow the existence of factions. One thing that Comrade Jerikwala explored was a concept of frictions and factions. You will not have a problem with comrades who share 
the same political school of thought, but you will have a problem with people who organize themselves as a faction. So I think that is important. The second point <clears throat> Robert Fiso is raising, yes, but I think even national, we must work together to ensure that the call for declaring the grave site of Comrade Hirikwala uh, to become one of uh, the national monument, that call should be fulfilled. And one Comrade Hirikwala is one of, is Twala Andwe, uh, who have sacrificed for this revolution and for our country. Thanks, Chair. Thank you very much. National Chairperson, uh, can you respond on behalf of uh, the President? Yes, as the president, comrades, uh, <coughs> the fooling and the of this, uh, as the president, <laughs> no, I, I want to, to, to raise only two issues. Uh, I think we should all work together to revitalize the heritage trail that was started. It's not only in South Africa, it's in the continent. The first uh, uh, conference outside of the country was in Lubaz and Botswana. And it goes on and on and on. It goes up to the further north part of the, of the continent. And I think we should revive that, spend money on it, uh, so that that history stands for life. That is one. I agree with Comrade Kuala on that issue. The second one is, we have a challenge that we should confront together. Uh, where, for example, you see, when you get an attack on the movement, uh, it doesn't matter what kind of an attack. I think we should uh, confront this question of cadres of the movement uh, lamenting the collapsing of the movement. You know, it's like a, a pilot who is piloting a plane and say, uh, passengers, this plane is about to crash. I think it's a strange phenomenon in the NC, which we must have. After all, there's a bigger army within the movement that attacks the movement from within. And we must confront that issue, deal with this, unify the movement. If I have a complaint, I must bring it to the movement. I must not go about and say, the movement is a is our fun journey into the way responsibility of being a co-pilot. I have a duty to ensure that I if so I think those are the two points I want to raise. The ANC has a lot of potential to grow. Uh, the problem we have against uh, your core right community is this thing of thinking that we belong to factions. Uh, we don't belong there, we belong to the ANC. Uh, uh, so we must be summoned when we must be summoned and be asked to account. Simple. That's where we belong, of course. Thank you very much, National Chair. Um, that then will bring us to the end of the program. But before we conclude, I would then invite Comrade Mtumiseni, the Provincial Secretary, to to wrap up this program, but thanks to all the provinces that have uh, participated and those that have been following through the, 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 the SABC and other media houses, as well as the Alliance platforms, the unity of, uh, of the NC, the unity of the Alliance is quite important for the unity of the people of South Africa. Comrade um, Dumiseni, Nopal. If Comrade Mtu is not here, the head of organizing in KwaZulu Natal, Comrade uh, Jabulo, can you then close uh, in linear closure, indicate also some of the programs. Um, on the 2nd of August, we'll also be celebrating 99 years of the South African Communist Party. And that is one of the programs that we are all working very hard in ensuring that it becomes a very successful program to celebrate the party, the programs, its contribution for, for, for the historical past, but also going into the into 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 the future. 
Comrade uh, Jabulo. No, thank you very much, uh, leadership. I think uh, from organizing and the PSO, and also from the SGO, uh, these programs will continue to be held throughout the country. And we really emphasize their value and their impact they continue to make. Uh, just on this program today, we've been able to reach quite a lot of people, whether via our uh, telemedia, as well as social media platforms, where discussions of this nature have really made an impact. It also portrays the organization as an organization that continues to work. And we thank comrades who have really taken time to participate, comrades from the Alliance for us to come here together and show unity and show unity of the organization is indeed important. And uh, more programs are going to be continuing and we'll continue to share uh, those particular programs. Also coverage from province, other provinces who have came in, this is indeed a significant platform that shows that uh, we can continue our work and interact uh, as provinces on a program that not, does not only celebrate our heroes, but also gives us a sense of direction moving forward. Thank you to the leadership and thank you for the support uh, in the planning of this particular event. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Comrade Njabulo, and thanks to comrades uh, across the provinces, KwaZulu Natal and Gauteng for hosting the programs for today and our programs are, are continuing. Remember, we will have another big session in celebrating the 99 years of the South African Communist Party. Um, thank you, National Chair. Uh, we can see Comrade Plaid. Yes, Comrade Plaid. Yes, Mam. Yeah, Thank you. Thank Long you, Mam. Thank 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 you, Mam.